Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Podcast. Let's discuss the Minutemen. What you are about to hear is deeply disturbing. I think a movie about the Minutemen would be awesome. Minutemen were active between 1980 and 1985. Four albums and 80 EPs on SST Records. You had D. Boone, who was the singer in most cases and guitar player. Mike Watt, who played bass, and George Hurley, who kicked ass on the drums. The reason I say it'd be a great movie is because Boone and Watt met at 13. Uh, D. Boone's mom got them started by showing them some chords and a guitar. Mike Watt didn't even know the difference between a bass and a guitar and he opted to pick up bass because it had less strings. That's funny that he would become such a powerful player. Then in 1976, Boone's mom died and both boys were grieving while they discovered punk rock. Punk was freeing to them because it was non-conformist and it didn't care that these kids could not play. Punk did not care that they had shitty equipment and didn't look like rock stars. So they formed the Minutemen in 1980 with George Hurley on the drums. All the papers run about Johnny on the radio, shot his name, he got his gun and shot me down. They used to call the commercial trappings and songs Mersh. They would avoid guitar solos, choruses, fade out, structured songs. They toured constantly, put out a few EPs, and then they found their style in 1983's Buzz or Howl Under Influence of Heat EP, which is still one of my favorites.
Double Nickels on a Dime from 1984 is a punk masterpiece. It's a milestone. It contains 45 songs spread out over four album sides. They had heard that Husker Du was preparing a double album, and so they took it as a challenge to do it themselves. The bands were friends of each other, so they agreed to simultaneously release the albums at the same time and the same day. <laughs> seven gigs in 63 days on a micro budget. to songwriting, Boone would write these unlikely anthems that are the basis of what most of us know as the best Minutemen work. But Mike Watts' songs were often more avant-garde. Hope we can rely on you not to be shallow. You're not keeping tug cocked. Cause both downstairs bath ceilings and walls to be soggy. Tub has to be properly cocked prior to any showering. Walls are drenched, both roofer and plumber here. Had to pay for two service calls. Water drips from all around. Kathy's ceiling, my ceiling. Don't use shower, don't use shower. But 
But on December 22nd, 1985, Boone was killed in an accident. He's in the 27 Club, unfortunately. He had been real sick with a fever. He was laying down on the rear of the van without a seatbelt when the rear axle broke on the highway and the van ran off the road. He was thrown out the back door of the van. He died instantly from a broken neck. His girlfriend, who was driving the van, was okay. Silence to regain composure Mike Watt and George Hurley wanted to quit music entirely, but they were encouraged by a Minutemen fan, Ed Crawford. It's an amazing story. Ed was a student at Ohio State. He loved the band, and when he heard that Dee Boone died and that Watt and Hurley wanted to quit music, he started calling them, bugging them, trying to get them to change their minds, trying to explain to them how they could go on and why they should. He even drove from Ohio to San Pedro. He found them, but of course they turned him away. He's crazy, right? But when he was getting ready to lead and head back home, Mike Watt to have a change of heart, and so they started jamming together, and they became a band called Firehose. <laughs> Firehose's first album is called Ragin' Full On, and it's awesome. It's really great. It's so well produced. It contained a lot of the elements of the Minutemen's best work, but it had a fresh, almost naive sound that I credit to Ed's general inexperience and intense passion.
This album is all you need to know about what a monster rhythm section was in both bands. And as a bass player, I hold a special place in my heart for this record. Mike Watts playing on it is amazing. Highly recommended. Fire hose, raging full on. <laughs> This record was a gateway to Minutemen for a lot of people who came after they had already moved on and Boone had died. And Firehose went on to record a few more albums and they eventually petered out, but they had a great run. I have to note that I had several interactions with those guys back in the day, starting with seeing the Minutemen open for R.E.M. just a few weeks before D. Boone's uh, crash. And bands like this toured constantly, and every time Firehose was anywhere near my vicinity I had to go. I wanted to mosh. They were such an electrifying live band. And we'd chat before and after the gigs, and they could not be more down to earth. They were like the nicest people. And then when I went to recording school in Ohio, uh, the band was playing there in Columbus, and they asked me when I came in, in astonishment, if I had driven all the way up for Richmond to see him. I didn't lie, and it didn't matter. They were so cool. <laughs> podcast at all interests you, I highly recommend a book called Our Band Could Be Your Life by Michael Azerod. It puts you right in the middle of this era. It's really well written. I don't think there's been a time since then that I was so invested in being a part of this scene. So this book is special to me because it gets it right. Highly recommend it. Really good read. Includes other chapters about Sonic Youth and Black Flag. It's just American underground rock at its best. 
I was sitting around the other day Tapping my feet A publication came to my door Said you died and gone to sleep But I couldn't shed a tear I never knew you well But I'm missing you just the same Liver, please rest easy down on Chestnut Street Cause I'm here in that old freight train And the last thing I'll say is that everything Mike Watt has recorded since Debo's death has been dedicated to his friend. Mike Watt eventually went on to be part of the, the Stooges with Iggy Pop with a big heart and a whole lot of integrity. Hats off to Mike Watt. has been produced by Donnie Shattuck. This idea where you make up your own uh, entertainment, your own activities, I think it was really intense on us, you know, this whole idea of DIY and stuff. I guess there's a debate over this, you know, you want things for young people to do so they don't get in gangs and in trouble like this, but if things are too set up and stuff, you end up uh, running a bunch of, uh, creating an army of robots anyway, you know, there's, there comes a period when you're going to have to come up do things, you know, become your own person, your own, pick your own friends, your own guys you want to, you know, build dreams with and stuff. Big change in my life, meeting deep in. Amigos, gracias para escuchar. This has been produced by Donnie Shattuck.